I am thrilled to announce that I will be on board the re-inaugural of Etihad's A380 next week, as well as on three additional flights in the coming weeks, including the first apartment, as well as the residence. It was a hell of a journey to get to this point, and I could not be more excited that it now is all set and ready to go. When the A380 was retired, that also meant that a lifelong dream of mine fell apart as I only got to fly twice on a trip with my dad and during this time I of course prioritized family time over filming. I also had tickets on two other occasions but never made it. I had booked London Heathrow to Sydney back in the day when the A380 was still soaring all the way to Australia, yet uh, once I got ill right on departure day and had to cancel, and the second time Australia shut its border because of Covid. I mean it was all laid out and I had also already received a custom offer for the residence, which then also seemed to be gone forever. Hearing about the aircraft's retirement then was a huge letdown. Yet there were always rumours about the plane's return, every few months or so was suggested that there might be hope. And that was even after Etihad doubled down and insisted that the aircraft would stay in Spain and would only have a slim chance of ever returning. I never lost hope because Etihad also pushed change during this time in other areas. They made the switch to Armani Casa tableware and business class, which also included a welcome return of toppers and duvets, which both were long gone, so that were welcome changes. And as demand was picking up and picking up, you know, I was really hoping that they would change their mind uh, and bring the aircraft back. And when the news finally broke that Etihad would really give the aircraft a second chance, I immediately looked out for tickets and I checked the schedule every day uh, to see when the aircraft would enter service again. And then on the 26th of December 2022, I booked tickets for the 15th of July. I booked two tickets for both me and my girlfriend because the first apartment is definitely at its best when flying it together. And for the next couple of months, we remained the only passengers in first class sitting in 3 and 4K, which in my opinion are the best seats in the house. It was a great plan, included all hotels and additional flights, you know, just everything. And then one day, around a month before the re-inaugural, upon checking the seat map on Expert Flyer, I realized that Etihad had zeroed out booking classes A and F, meaning that effective immediately, no one would be able to buy a first class ticket for this flight anymore. And just hours later, Etihad took the A380 out of the schedule and therefore had postponed the re-inaugural by a week. I knew from the start that this was a possibility, because when you have to revive an aircraft from retirement, there are all sorts of things that can happen, right from missing parts to crew training, but I, I thought that a delay was unlikely, since Etihad had advertised the 15th of July everywhere, from social media to the Etihad Stadium. So after that, I quickly checked with American Express where I booked my tickets and we rebooked for the 22nd of July. I also had to cancel all other flights and hotels around those dates to see what would happen now, since Etihad remained silent and did not comment on the delay at all. But that of course was not the end of the story. So soon after, things changed again and booking classes for first were again zeroed out, this time until the 1st of August. But as Etihad didn't take the A380 off the schedule immediately, I decided to book additional tickets to cover both dates and see what would happen. And then after all of that, they made a final change and scheduled the plane for the 25th of July, which now is fine. I hope. So with just two weeks to go, I finalized the itinerary once again, and now it is all in place. Just the seats are no different, which will be interesting. I was now unable to select seats in rows 3 and 4 on either side, since they were already taken just as bookings were going live for the 25th. Luckily, there still was a double suite available in row 2, so we will be able to enjoy a double bed. I of course don't know who will be seated in rows 3 and 4, but based on the timing that the seats were gone, I suggest that these will either be brand ambassadors or influencers flying on Etihad's invitation. But let's see. Etihad also does not sell the residence on this flight, so maybe there's an opportunity to peek inside before I get to fly it a few days later. That would certainly be great. 
I honestly don't know what to expect from this re-inaugural and we will just enjoy it. I will of course film it, but I'm sure that this will be very different from all other videos that I've posted so far, as it is so unpredictable. When the flight was first announced for the 15th of July, I was sure that it would be all a big party, but as the delay went so quietly, I am not so sure now. Anyway, let's see what happens, but I have absolutely no idea. I did take a few extra steps to prepare for the upcoming flights, as I recently flew from Abu Dhabi to Washington on board Etihad 787-9 in order to experience their current first-class product. The cabin's design is very similar to the A380 and they share many elements, so this was a great opportunity to get a first glimpse at how the first-class experience on board the A380 might be. And one thing I also really enjoyed was to be back in Etihad's first-class lounge in Abu Dhabi, which also had come a long way from being closed completely during Covid to then being open only for breakfast before once again returning to their former 24-hour schedule. And just as on board the 787, it was a welcome blast from the past and gave me the opportunity to see the baseline of their current service options, so I am curious to see if they will level up their FMB selection for the A380's return or not. Focus there, of course, is especially on the B, as the food selection and preparation has remained excellent throughout. And of course, when time comes and I'll finally be able to experience the residence part of the lounge, that will also be a very special day for me since with the move to the new terminal, this will also not be around forever and I certainly don't want to miss out once again. You can expect four cinematic flight reports featuring Etihad's A380 coming soon. Take care and see you on board. Bye.